there's a few ways to use Twitter to sell books. I'm going to show you, I follow a lot of authors, so I'll kind of scroll through and show you some of the stuff that I see. Um, I may be a little critical because most authors are doing things I dislike on social media. It doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't sell books, but if you're being annoying, you're probably not selling books. And so you can scroll down through Twitter. What you notice probably firstly is that pictures with, or tweets with big pictures like this work really well. This is a statistic, but you could use an image quote. Um, even something that's not too attractive is still eye-catching, but you want to be kind of careful to try to use attractive images. For images, you can just use a plain picture like that that has nothing to do with anything. Um, but if you add a picture with some text on it, you can use um, Canva.com or WordSwag, which is a really nice iPhone or iPad app to add text to pictures, which is nice to do. That's also a really easy way to make headers for your Twitter. Um, my header looks kind of like this. I should have creativity up here somewhere, but I don't. Um, you have your description, your profile picture. Basically, when you're using Twitter, you don't want to just be tweeting about your book all the time. You can do it well. Um, you can set up, here are some of the things that I've tweeted, and it's just a nice big picture, and then a few hashtags. Basically, you're sharing useful content. So I'm not promoting anything here. This is just a piece of content that I made that's good content that people can like and share. They come to my website, they find my website, then they might find out about my books or sign up for my books. I can promote stuff sometimes. Like if I had a book launch or a free campaign or 99 cent campaign, I would definitely put it on Twitter. Um, but I try to make it a little bit better than just go buy my book. I try to find a reason to have engagement or try to have a bigger thing, a bigger story than just like, here's my book for sale. If you're starting out, you need followers. So the easy way to get followers is just to follow other people. So I'll go up here and I'll search for, for example, um, I might search for a hashtag. So I know that YA Lit is a hashtag for young adult literature. And if I search for that, I'll find a lot of other young adult authors who are using that hashtag. And so I can tell that these people are young adult authors. And if I click on them, I'll find out a little bit about them and what kind of books they write. And if they are writing similar books, I can follow them. You want to be a little bit aggressive about following. And Twitter makes it really easily easy because they recommend people for you. So if I find one person, you could also be looking for, this one's a book reviewer and probably a librarian. So I might follow her because I know she's a book reviewer. Then Twitter says you might want to also follow these accounts. So I can check here are more librarians or authors that I can follow. Um, you can be a little aggressive about following, which just means you follow first. I used to be just, I would just wait. And if somebody followed me, I might follow them back. But if you want to build your followers faster, you can follow first and just find people. Don't follow everybody, but you'll be looking for other authors in your genre or potential readers or people who work in your field. Um, and it'll also tell me over here who to follow. I can say view all. And Twitter, whoops, that's funny. Twitter doesn't have any recommendations right now. But usually Twitter will give you a big long list of people who are similar to the people that you followed. So you kind of got to start following a few people. And then Twitter will recommend more. I wonder if this will work this time. Nope. Um, but you could do that every day. You could say, I'm going to follow 20 people a day. And um, Twitter will actually limit you. You can only get, I think it's something like 2,000 followers. But it's a ratio thing. So you can only get a certain, you can only follow so many people if people are following you back. Um, so you want to not follow random people. You want to follow people who are similar to you and what you're writing about or who are in the same field or might like your, like your books so that when you follow them, they follow you back. And people don't have to follow back. Um, and I also don't like those automatic services that automatically tell you who's not following you back and then they 
they have it all systemized. Um, but it doesn't take that much time to go on. And you can basically just follow as many people as you can per day until you hit a limit and then wait a few days or a week until enough people have followed you back that you can follow more people. There are other ways. You can buy like 70,000 Twitter followers or whatever, but I wouldn't recommend it because although it's nice to have social proof, like when you only have a couple hundred a couple hundred followers, there's a social issue, a social proof problem where people won't take you seriously if you don't have a lot of followers. But the way to get over that in the beginning is just to follow a lot of people until you get enough follow backs. Um, I wouldn't buy, there's a lot of people who have like 100,000 followers and they're just doing self-promotional stuff that I don't think is really working very well. Um, this is what most people do. So they say, here's a quote, there's some hashtags, and there's a link to the book. And that's fine if you use it sometimes, but you don't want to do that all the time. You want to be reviewing other people's books, you want to be supporting other authors who write similar things to you, and you want to be doing it all in a way that doesn't annoy the people who are following you. You want to be producing good content, not just um, promotional stuff, because Twitter is not really for promotional stuff, but the majority of authors do stuff like this. It's not necessarily bad, it's just you see so much of this stuff from every author that we learn to tune it all out. So we see stuff like this and we just turn it out because we're not interested because we've seen too much of it. So that kind of stuff, it's not that it's bad, it's just it's not effective for selling books. You need to be doing more interesting things um, that get people's attention. And that can be even, I mean, to some extent, like if you share, if I was writing crime and I retweeted this tweet, then he may retweet one of my tweets, which has, you know, if we're, if we have the same readership, if we're both right, if we have a lot of followers who like crime fiction, then that might be good for both of us. I like when people add the book covers in here. Um, but like this feed, his feed is pretty much all about his books and most authors feeds probably look just like that. So that's something you want to be aware of. See if you can be building the kind of community that supports other authors and readers in your genre. For example, like this one's Indie Creativity. Um, and all they do is retweet other people's stuff about creativity and indie. Um, and so they, a lot of their stuff's on autopilot. So like if I, um, if I publish something on my blog, they have it set up that they'll automatically retweet my stuff. So they're retweeting tons of content, but it's not promotional stuff. It's mostly blog articles. So interesting stuff that people will actually read. So you want to be finding the people who are, who might be either the right readers or who have a platform of the right readers. And then you want to make friends with them by liking their stuff. Liking is really easy because you can just like everything and like I can go through a feed and I can like everything and it just kind of lets them know that I'm out here and it lets them know I exist and I read their post. It's different from retweeting because if I retweet it's going to go to my followers and I don't necessarily want to show a bunch of promotional stuff like this to my followers. Um, but if I really want to do them a favor, then I would retweet because a retweet means other people, my people are actually going to see what they're making, what they're putting up. If I'm, if I'm liking it like this, it's not really doing very much for them. It's just that they can notice it. They get a little notification and they know that I liked it, but it, it'd be a bigger favor if I retweeted it. Um, so that's the kind of thing you want to do is go through your feed. You want to follow people, who you want to build relationships with um, and you want to be liking or retweeting their stuff. But you also want to be curating content, which means you want to be finding good new content that you can share so that you're the person sharing new stuff that they haven't seen before. But this is just, I just search for young adult readers and I'm basically just liking everything 
because those people are all people who might share some of my stuff later because I'm writing young adult fiction. But if I wanted to really build a relationship with somebody on Twitter, then I would either use this one, which is reply tweet. So for example, I'll often say something like, I can reply tweet and I'll say, that's such a beautiful cover if I see a cover that I like. Something really easy. Um, a reply just means it's better than a retweet or, or a like because you're talking to them and they can talk back to you and you can have little mini dialogues. And it's very easy this way on Twitter to actually have little conversations with people that normally you couldn't reach. Like maybe you could write them a long email and they wouldn't get back to you by email. Um, but you can just say something to them on Twitter and they'll see it and they'll probably talk back at you. So it's a way to kind of get some actual engagement with people. But that's one way. So I can use, I haven't seen anything I would really talk with. This one's looking for first readers. That's kind of nice. This one's a nice cover, sort of. Student press. And all I did was search for a keyword, and I'm just scrolling through. So if you, you could do this for a few different keywords, especially when you're getting started, and just start following all of these people who talk about your genre. Um, or if you want to go bigger, I could search for like NaNoWriMo and get all writers if you want to connect with other writers, but I would really focus on just your genre. And then you can also use this message feed feature, um, which a lot of people, if you go into messages, a lot of what you get are kind of spam like this. that says, thanks for the follow and then do something, which is why most people say that direct messages don't work at all because most people are using an automation software that just automatically sends out something like, thanks for the follow, join me on Facebook, or thanks for the follow, check out my free book, that kind of stuff. I don't think it works at all. Um, I never actually do what they ask me to, but if they sent me a real message and I knew who they were, then I might. So you can send people real messages. I would probably use the reply to it. Like I would probably like their stuff first, maybe retweet something, then maybe reply. So you're slowly getting them to be aware of who you are. Otherwise they'll just ignore your message. Um, but then if I had, like if I had, liked a lot of their stuff and retweeted a lot of their stuff for maybe a couple weeks so that they know that I'm engaging with their content. I've really been sharing their content. Then after a couple weeks, I might be able to ask them to do something for me. So for example, I have a young adult um, giveaway coming up. And young adult uh, giveaways are pretty nice because I, I'm not asking them to review my book. I'm not asking them to share my book. I'm only asking them to share a giveaway for free books with their readers. That's good content that their readers are going to like. There's not really going to be a lot of opposition for them to share it. These are some of the books I'm giving away, actually, um, which is kind of fun. And they're doing a Goodreads choice thing. But I might find somebody who has a lot of young adult readers. Here's Bloomsbury, U.S. Kids. They probably wouldn't share it because it's a official publishing group, but they could. Or I could just find someone like, this one has 12,000 followers, so if I could get Jack to share my giveaway, that would be great. So I would just click on his thing and then write a message. I can tweet to him or I can send a direct message. If I tweet to him, everybody's going to see it. Um, which might actually be better because if I tweet to him, his people can see it, my people can see it, um, so it might get more engagement. But, and it's easier because he doesn't really have to do anything. He could just ignore it and it, I would still get some visibility. But it that's a little bit spammy um, if they don't know who you are. So you could also use a direct message, which is private, and I direct message him and then say, I have a free giveaway for young adult readers if it's suitable, could you share it? It's still got to be pretty short. I don't think it's the same limitation, but it's still got to be a pretty short message. Um, but you'd add the link and ask them to share it. And if you do that to enough people, I mean, 
if you're doing it to strangers, it depends kind of how much you've warmed them up. If you're doing it to total strangers, they might ignore you. But if you spend a couple weeks and they know who you are, they'll be much more likely to share your content. Um, giveaways are also a great way just because giveaways are focused on getting people to sign up for stuff. So on Twitter, I might not get a lot of engagement, but if I could get Twitter people to share a free giveaway and come sign up to my email list, if I went big enough with that and, and really contacted a ton of people, I could get all the people's followers, young adult followers off of Twitter onto my email list through a giveaway, which would be really powerful as long as I had stuff to give them later. Because once you have people on your list, you still need to build that relationship and then turn it into sales somehow. Um, anyway, that's basically how I would use Twitter is you want to be careful about not being too spammy and you want to aggressively follow. So I actually don't use it as much as I should, but I should be going through and following people who are into self-publishing or young adult. I actually should have a separate account for young adult than I do self-publishing because I'm kind of mixing it all up, which is bad, but I'm doing it anyway because I'm lazy. Um, but you'd find people and follow them and retweet their stuff or reply to their tweet. If you reply, then everybody can see the reply and you're starting that dialogue. Anyway, I'm gonna stop the video now. You probably already know how to use Twitter, but um, just try not to be promotional. Try to be helpful um, and to give other people a reason to like you. Basically by sharing other people's content, that's the easiest way, but also just getting engagement. Um, like when I write a tweet, I might not want to promote something. I might not even want to link back to my article, like at least not all the time. Sometimes I would just want to say something that attracts my readers. Like I might say something simple like, I can't wait for the new Hunger Games movie. I don't know, something really simple that people who like the Hunger Games can appreciate. Um, not all the time, but some of the time you want to just kind of share yourself and give little sentences or ideas or thoughts you're having or situations um, that are just interesting that aren't really, you're not trying to get them to do anything. You're not trying to get them to click. You're not using a ton of hashtags. If you can do that, that'll really help with Twitter. Twitter is something I would spend, I mean, I don't go on every day, but if you, have an, if you have it on your iPhone, it's kind of easier just to scroll through and you can like a hundred things or you can follow a hundred people in, you know, five or 10 minutes a day. Um, so I try to just use it. Like I keep it on my iPhone and I, I use it if I'm stuck or if I have to wait for something, if I'm in line at the grocery store, that's when I would pull out Twitter and just a few minutes a day of, you know, liking and sharing other people's things is really enough. People say you have to tweet all the time. I don't. Um, I tweet probably a few times a week. I mean, I don't tweet all the time. Some people say like 10 a day, and I think that's too much. But if you're doing a promotion, you're trying to sell your book, there are things to watch out for, like the best time to tweet per day, or um, you might want to, if you have one offer, like my young adult book giveaway, I don't want to just tweet that once because that's a big offer. That's a big promotion I'm doing. So I want to tweet that maybe five or six times and I want to do it differently with different words and different images because they'll all kind of work a little bit differently. Um, but that's not something I would do all the time. I'm only doing it short term to build a list. And if I have a book launch, I'll do some promotional stuff for a book launch, but I won't tweet about my book forever, like long term. I won't I won't use it for long term sales. Instead I'll be writing articles or book reviews about books in my genre and posting those and promoting those to get people back to my site where they can sign up or they can get my other books. I'm gonna stop this video here and then we're gonna make another video talk